Hi everyone, welcome to Man with Demon. Please don't forget to subscribe, enjoy the video. Amidst the grandeur of the palace, a striking figure with blonde hair and piercing blue eyes made an unexpected entrance. His demeanor exuding a blend of confidence and desperation, with a boldness that bordered on audacity. He began to plead his case for employment within the palace walls. The Lord Chamberlain's fury was palpable as he confronted the newcomer, his voice laced with indignation. Do you have any idea how many of my men you've slaughtered? He demanded, his gaze unwavering, undeterred by the accusation. The man paused for a moment, his expression betraying a hint of amusement. Hmm, how many was it again? Thousands? There were so many I've lost count. He replied casually, as if discussing the weather, as he launched into an explanation. The Lord Chamberlain remained steadfast, his gaze fixed firmly upon the intruder. I was only doing my duty as a knight and protecting my king, but now the king is out to get me. I saved your life once. I'm only asking you to return the favor. The man pleaded, his words tinged with desperation. After a moment of contemplation, the Lord Chamberlain relented, his tone begrudging yet resigned. All right, fine. He conceded, acknowledging the debt. The man's face lit up with gratitude at the unexpected acquiescence. Thank you, your majesty, he exclaimed, his relief evident. With a stern yet magnanimous gesture, the Lord Chamberlain issued his decree. I'll allow you to stay at the Rose Palace, he declared, his decision final. However, before he could finish speaking, the man's expression shifted to one of sudden realization. Your Majesty, I know I have a pretty face, but dressing up as a woman is a big weight. He stuttered, his words trailing off as he came to a startling realization. In the midst of the unfolding drama, a servant stepped forward, his demeanor stern as he moved to intervene. With a firm grip, he began to usher the intruder towards the exit, his voice charged with a mix of authority and warning. Those awful rumors about you are still going around, you know. He remarked pointedly, his gaze unwavering as the tension in the room reached a crescendo. The Lord Chamberlain's expression hardened, his patience wearing thin. How much longer will you keep hiding like this? He demanded, his voice edged with frustration. In a sudden burst of anger, the clerk seized the intruder by the collar, his actions fueled by a combination of indignation and impatience. Come along. Now he barked, his tone leaving no room for argument. Confusion washed over the intruder as he struggled to comprehend the sudden turn of events. W.H. what? He stammered, his words faltering in the face of the servant's forceful insistence. Meanwhile, the Lord Chamberlain, taken aback by the intruder's accusations, sought clarification. Who do you think you are? He demanded, his voice tinged with disbelief. As the servant escorted the intruder out of the Lord's presence, he offered a parting admonition, his words laden with a sense of caution. You must be mindful of what you say to his majesty. He cautioned sternly, his grip firm as he guided the intruder towards the door. Undeterred by the servant's warning, the intruder offered a disarming smile as he introduced himself. It's a pleasure to meet you, please call me Jace. He remarked casually, his tone brimming with confidence. It seems like we'll be seeing a lot of each other. With that cryptic statement hanging in the air, he disappeared from view, leaving behind a trail of intrigue and uncertainty. As Jay stood there, a picture of composure despite the circumstances, he couldn't help but let out a deep sigh. In his mind's eye, he envisioned himself adorned in a delicate pink dress, a whimsical image that elicited a wry smile from him. Seizing the opportunity to engage in banter, the clerk couldn't resist a teasing remark. Do you think I'll look good in a dress? He quipped, his tone playful yet tinged with curiosity. Unfazed by the clerk's jest, Jace replied with a hint of mischief. Perhaps if you were able to hide that physique of yours. His words were laced with humor, a subtle jab at the clerk's sturdy frame, seeking to shift the conversation away from jest. I heard only the most beautiful ladies come to live in the palace, is that true? His curiosity piqued, he awaited the clerk's response with eager anticipation. Taking a moment to collect his thoughts, the clerk let out a resigned sigh before responding. Just as the world is filled with different types of flowers, 
Every lady in the palace is unique in her own way. If you don't find a way to restrain that curiosity of yours, you will be evicted. His words carried a weight of warning, a reminder of the strict protocols that govern life within the palace walls. Observing Jace's demeanor, the clerk couldn't help but find him to be a curious anomaly. How peculiar, he thought to himself, noting the contrast between Jace's relaxed confidence and the apprehension typically displayed by visitors to the palace. Despite his misgivings, the clerk couldn't deny that Jace's intentions appeared to be honorable enough. As Jace continued to muse aloud, the clerk couldn't suppress a lingering doubt. However, I do question his sanity, he added quietly, his voice tinged with a hint of skepticism in the midst of the palace's intricate web of intrigue. Jace remained an enigmatic figure, his true motives shrouded in uncertainty. As Halo and Jace arrived at the gaming archive, they were greeted by a young boy clad in the distinctive attire of the archive staff. Master Halo! The boy exclaimed, his voice filled with reverence and excitement. Maintaining an air of authority, Halo responded with calm assurance. At ease. I brought you a new recruit. His gaze shifted towards Jace as he added. This fellow from the terrace above. Another voice called out. Wild, we've got fresh meat. Bring a uniform. The boy named Wild turned his attention back to Jace, his expression a mixture of curiosity and amusement. Do you know how to handle a spear? He inquired, his tone brimming with anticipation. Jace hesitated for a moment before responding. A little. Before he could say more, Wild's voice echoed once again, this time with a hint of mischievous excitement. Fresh meat, you said, he exclaimed, his enthusiasm palpable as Jace donned the archive outfit, joining the ranks of the gaming archive staff. His companions couldn't help but tease him with good-natured laughter. That suits you better than a dress, wouldn't you say? They jested, their playful banter echoing through the archive. Wild, ever the instigator, couldn't resist adding to the jovial atmosphere. You're in for one hell of a welcome party, he declared, a gleam of excitement in his eyes. With Jace now fully immersed in the world of the gaming archive, the stage was set for a new chapter of adventure and camaraderie to unfold. Meanwhile, Felix made his way to Lucia's room, a stack of documents in hand. Hello, I'm Felix, he greeted her warmly. Have you decided what work you'd like to do? Lucia's expression turned thoughtful as she replied. Not yet. I'm not sure what I can do. Felix placed the documents on the table and began to search for something, his demeanor casual yet focused. Is that so? He trailed off, a hint of amusement in his voice. Let me know if an idea presents itself. In the meantime... I'll just stay here and do some work. As Felix chuckled, Lucia couldn't help but feel a pang of disappointment. I thought he was going to give me a list of ideas. She thought to herself, her brow furrowing in confusion. Curious about the decisions made by the other ladies, Lucia ventured to ask. Um, what did the other ladies decide on? Felix paused in his task, his pen hovering over the documents as he considered her question. Most have settled on making clothes or jewelry, he explained. Lucia's shoulders slumped slightly at the response. I'm not really good at that sort of stuff, she admitted hesitantly. Undeterred, Felix continued to scribble notes, his voice reassuring. The other ladies are in the same position. They'll probably have a servant or family member make it for them, he remarked matter-of-factly. Lucia's eyes widened in astonishment at the revelation. What? she exclaimed, taken aback by the notion. Glancing over at Felix, who appeared slightly confused as he scratched his head, Lucia couldn't help but wonder what other surprises lay in store as she navigated life within the palace walls. Concern etched across her face as she observed Felix's distressed state. What's the matter with him? What's wrong? she inquired, her voice tinged with worry. Felix wiped his brow his breaths coming in ragged gasps as he struggled to compose himself. Men are normally allowed in the Rose Palace. Even when we are allowed to enter, we must keep our distance from the ladies. He explained, his tone strained. Surprised by this revelation, 
Lucia took hold of the document that Felix had been working on and examined it with interest. What's this? She asked, her curiosity piqued. Felix's shoulders slumped as he prepared to divulge the details of his task. I've been tasked with recording the palace's budget and reporting it to the Lord Chamberlain each month. He began, his voice heavy with resignation. I tried to make it as straightforward as possible, but he keeps making me rewrite it. A deep sigh escaped Felix's lips as he confessed. Every time I look at these papers, I get so angry I could snap. His distress was palpable, and tears welled in his eyes as he struggled to contain his emotions. Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to vent my frustration. He apologized, his voice choked with emotion. Lucia offered a sympathetic smile as she gently patted Felix's arm in reassurance. It is a bit dense, she conceded, her gaze returning to the document. It'd be much simpler if he used charts or pictures. In that moment, Felix's eyes lit up with hope as he leaned towards Lucia, his expression eager. Do you perhaps have a solution, Lady Lucia? Would you like me to help? He asked, his voice tinged with anticipation. In the elegant dining room of the palace, the Lord Chamberlain sat at the table accompanied by a young boy who bore a striking resemblance to a lord in the making. Their meal consisted of succulent cuts of meat, the aroma filling the room as they dined. As the Lord Chamberlain finished his meal and dabbed at his mouth with a napkin, the boy continued to eat methodically, cutting into his meat with a fork and knife. Seizing the opportunity to impart some news, the Lord Chamberlain cleared his throat before addressing the boy. Ahem, Count Jarnas said he will no longer be able to teach you. He informed him, his tone serious yet measured. Curious about the implications of this announcement, the boy looked up from his plate and inquired. Do you know how many people are lining up to become his pupil? His lips curved into a knowing smile as he awaited a response. However, before the Lord Chamberlain could reply, he was interrupted by a sudden outburst. Elvis! He called out sharply, his voice echoing through the room. Startled, the boy flinched involuntarily. His attention snapped back to the Lord Chamberlain with a hint of defiance in his eyes. Elvis! met the Lord Chamberlain's gaze and uttered a bold statement. Count Jarnas is a coward, he declared, his words ringing out with conviction. The Lord's curiosity peaked as he inquired further. How so? Alvis, undeterred by the Lord's probing, continued to voice his grievances. He said I had to attend class on the day of Mother's memorial ceremony. He explained, his frustration evident. However, the Lord remained steadfast in his defense of Count Jarnus. I told him that he was following my orders, he clarified, his tone firm. But Alvis wasn't convinced, his words dripping with disdain. More like he was trying to save his own skin by pandering to you. It seems like he's still scared of dying even though he's lived for so long, he retorted, his frustration palpable as he mulled over his predicament. Alvis couldn't shake the desire to honor his mother's memory. I might not remember what she looks like, but I still want to attend mother's memorial service. He admitted, his voice tinged with longing. With a heavy sigh, he turned to the Lord with a plea in his eyes. As my brother, you have to let me go, he implored, his desperation evident. But the Lord's patience waned, his anger simmering beneath the surface. Enough. It's time for you to take rest. He commanded, his voice laced with authority, as he abruptly rose from the table and began to leave the room, leaving Alvis in stunned silence. Meanwhile, Serena entered the room, a pot of fragrant roses in hand. The roses are in full bloom today, my lady, she announced cheerfully, a warm smile gracing her features as she approached Lucia, placing the pot of flowers on the table. Serena leaned in closer, her voice filled with kindness. I will add some petals to your bath tonight. It will surely cheer you up. She offered gently. Not to mention, everyone knows the fragrance captivates men. She added with a playful wink, attempting to lift Lucia's spirits with a touch of humor. As the red roses shimmered with breathtaking beauty, thought crossed Lucia's mind. Maybe that's why men use roses when proposing to a girl. The idea lingered in her thoughts, prompting Serena to offer a suggestion. 
You can use roses as well as other kinds of flowers to tint the lips. Serena proposed with a warm smile, her eyes twinkling with mischief. Intrigued by the idea, Lucia's curiosity was piqued. Really? Other flowers as well? She inquired, her interest evident as she plucked a rose petal and delicately placed it against her lips, rubbing it in with gentle strokes. Serena couldn't help but chuckle at Lucia's adorable antics, her laughter ringing out melodiously in the room. My lady, you have to crush it first in order to get a nice hue. She explained patiently, her amusement evident. Astonished by the revelation, Lucia's eyes widened in disbelief. Crush it? Can I crush it with my teeth? She asked, her voice tinged with excitement and nervousness. Before Serena could respond, the sudden appearance of Lord interrupted their conversation, causing Lucia to startle in surprise. Huh? What? How long has he been standing there? She wondered, her heart racing with apprehension. Observing Lucia rubbing the rose petal against her lips, Lord's gaze softened, a hint of amusement dancing in his eyes. Does it suit your tastes? He inquired, his voice gentle as he watched her with a curious expression. As Lucia felt annoyance prickling within her, she silently lamented. Ugh, he's so annoying! However, she composed herself and began to offer an explanation to Lord, hoping to clarify the situation. I wasn't trying to eat it. She started, her voice faltering slightly under Lord's amused gaze. Serena, ever the loyal companion, chimed in with a supportive affirmation. That is correct, she was chewing on it in the hopes of making herself more attractive. She interjected, her tone earnest. Interrupting Serena with a frustrated sigh, Lucia exclaimed, Why would you tell him that? Her cheeks flushed with embarrassment as she realized the extent of her predicament. To her dismay, Lord's amusement only seemed to intensify, his smile growing wider. Lucia's irritation bubbled to the surface as she retorted. Are you done? Her voice carried a hint of exasperation as she attempted to regain control of the situation. However, Lord's laughter persisted, much to Lucia's chagrin. Is it that funny? She demanded, her irritation palpable. It's not like I ate dirt or something. Unfazed by Lucia's protests, Lord continued to chuckle, prompting her to vent her frustration. Is your life so boring that you laugh at anything? How about a leaf blowing by? Is that funny too? She quipped sarcastically, her words laced with annoyance. Amidst Lucia's tirade, Lord offered an unexpected observation, his tone light-hearted. I think that's the most I've ever heard you speak. You have quite a way with words, he remarked his laughter subsiding as he regarded her with newfound admiration. However, his next comment struck a nerve, causing Lucia to take action. It must have been hard for you to hold all that in, not only your words but your appetite too, considering the size of your midnight snack, he began. But before he could finish, Lucia swiftly placed her hand over his mouth, silencing him mid-sentence. As Serena departed to fetch the requested glass of rose tea, Lucia seized the opportunity to confide in Lord. Oh my, I'm rather thirsty all of a sudden. Serena, would you fetch me a glass of rose tea? She requested, her voice carrying a sense of urgency. With Serena gone and the door closed behind her, Lord couldn't help but notice Lucia's apprehension. What's the matter? You don't want her to know? He inquired, his curiosity piqued. Yeah, Lucia admitted quietly her gaze fixed on the closed door. Lord pressed further, his brow furrowing with concern. Why not? He prodded gently. Drawing closer to Lord, Lucia leaned in and whispered in his ear, her voice barely above a murmur. I don't have much of an appetite during the day. I just pretend to eat so she doesn't worry. I eat later at night. She confessed, her words tinged with vulnerability. Lord's expression softened as he processed Lucia's revelation. So you eat food that has been sitting out all. He began, but Lucia cut him off with a firm rebuttal. It doesn't go bad that fast. The problem is the Rose Palace's policy. She explained, her frustration evident. Perplexed by her statement, Lord sought clarification. Huh? What policy? He inquired, his confusion apparent. 
Lucia drew closer to him, her voice barely above a whisper as she divulged the palace's strict rules. I heard that the ladies in the palace aren't allowed to eat with other men, she revealed, her tone tinged with disbelief. Surprised by this revelation, Lord shook his head in bewilderment. Is that so? I had no idea, he admitted, his expression reflecting his genuine surprise. Unaware that Lord shared her ignorance, Lucia couldn't hide her astonishment. You didn't know either? she exclaimed, her eyes widening in disbelief. Surprised by Lord's admission of ignorance, she awaited his response. Lucia couldn't help but wonder, how could he not know? Lord, however, brushed off her incredulity with a nonchalant response. Ah well, I've been so busy these days, I might have forgotten. Then us dining together will be our little secret, he suggested, his tone casual as he offered a plausible explanation. As he retreated into his thoughts, Lord's demeanor grew contemplative. I would prefer not to get close to any of the women in the palace. I am well aware that those who want to seize the throne send their daughters here. He mused inwardly, his expression unreadable. She is an empty-headed fool who spends her days playing dress-up. In the end, she's no different from the rest of them. I only came here to find out the truth behind the recent poisoning. Nothing more, nothing less. I must maintain my distance, he resolved, his resolve unwavering. With a courteous nod, Lord turned away and began to take his leave, apologizing for the intrusion. My apologies for the intrusion, I should be on my way, he announced, his voice carrying a note of finality. Accepting his departure with a resigned sigh, Lucia bid him farewell. Okay, I'll go get some rest then, she replied, her weariness evident as she turned away, thoughts of fatigue creeping into her mind. However, just as she was about to retire for some much-needed rest, Lord called out to her, prompting her to turn back in surprise. My lady, he addressed her, his tone softer now. Yes, what? Lucia responded, her curiosity piqued. Without hesitation, Lord made an unexpected request, catching Lucia off guard. Eric, he stated simply, a faint smile playing at his lips. Confused by his sudden familiarity, Lucia stumbled over her words. Who's? she began, before Lord clarified. No need to call me Lord Chamberlain, call me Eric, he requested, his tone gentle yet firm. Fatigue creeping into her mind, the Lord Chamberlain, a figure of authority, took a moment to convey a personal request to Lucia. Call me Eric. Lucia's surprise was evident in her response, a hesitant. Um, okay. As he exited her room, Eric couldn't help but muse. Was she expecting me to say something else? His thoughts drifted to introspection, wondering. Is my name perhaps too old-fashioned in this modern era? In another corner of the chamber, Felix and an assistant entered discreetly, bearing a stack of important documents. His eyes widened in shock at the sight of Eric, prompting him to swiftly seek refuge behind a nearby pillar. Despite Felix's attempt to remain unnoticed, Eric's keen perception caught sight of him, prompting a subtle gesture to beckon him forth. With a nervous gulp, Felix cautiously approached, addressing Eric with a slight stumble. What's the matter, your mosh? I mean, Lord Chamberlain? Eric, with a stack of papers in hand, glanced inquisitively at Felix's burden, inquiring with authority. What's that you have there? With a swift motion, he retrieved a document, his eyes scanning its contents intently. Felix, recognizing the gravity of the situation, attempted to explain. It's the budget report for last. However, his words were interrupted by Eric's sudden realization. Ah, the palace expenses don't show any signs of dropping. These women seem to relish the mere act of spending money, he observed. Pointing to the colorful diagrams, he inquired. What are these drawings? His colleague responded. Oh, those. The circle has been divided according to each item's proportion. It's like sharing a pie. It makes complex information easier to understand. After dividing up the circle, I discovered that more money is spent on cultivating roses than on purchasing dresses and accessories. Eric then asked, Was this your idea? Felix, visibly nervous, leaned in and whispered, 
Can you keep a secret? Try not to be surprised, but it was Lady Lucia who taught me all about it after her near-death experience. It truly seems like she's become a completely different person. It's like a long-hidden part of her has finally emerged. Intrigued, Eric remarked. Because of this? Felix explained. Not just that. Struggling with these numbers usually takes me weeks. Thanks to her, this only took me a day. He began contemplating. Perhaps this could be how Lucia contributes. Then he inquired. Setting that aside, do you think my name is outdated? Felix promptly responded. No, not at all. Your name is splendid, truly remarkable. Eric interjected. Then why didn't you react? Returning his documents, he started to depart. Attempting to detain him, Felix exclaimed. Excuse me. As Eric turned, he simply replied, Ahem, it's nothing. In the dimly lit archive, rows of empty drums were arranged. It appeared deserted until a shirtless figure emerged, flexing his wrists and questioning. Do you expect me to remain in this form? What am I supposed to do in this state? Facing him was another shirtless individual, who explained, As planned, the moonlight charged with the energy of countless days did penetrate an uninhabited vessel. However, it seems another soul inhabited it before you. We have failed. He furrowed his brow in frustration, his fingers instinctively scratching at his neck. With an air of agitation, he exclaimed, And I'm being driven mad by this flesh. The hair you stuck on this scalp is inches away from falling off. With a resigned sigh, he continued, I can't exactly go around holding it in place. His frustration boiled over into a torrent of screams, echoing through the dimly lit chamber. I thought the time had finally come for my revenge meanwhile cloaked in a somber black veil. Another figure stood their presence imposing yet enigmatic without turning to face him. They offered a solemn reassurance patience you must wait until the moon has recharged itself anew. However his patience worth and his anger mounting with each passing moment. My heart has stopped, and my body is rotting I cannot wait another thousand days. He roared his voice echoing off the cold stone walls in response the enigmatic figure turned slightly. Their gaze piercing through the darkness as they uttered cryptic words of hope there might be another way. Eager for a solution he implored what is it with a measured tone. The figure revealed a glimmer of possibility the soul that now holds the energy of the moonlight has not yet fully become one with its new body if that soul were to stab someone else in the heart. The freshly killed body would be yours to take his fist clenched in a mixture of rage and anticipation. He demanded confirmation as long as it gets stabbed in the heart I can take any body I want. Sounds like you have someone in mind a sinister smirk played across his lips as he added Eric my brother who killed me I want his body. On the other hand amidst the meticulously chosen ensemble of a pristine white shirt and a skirt adorned with intricate floral patterns Lucia found herself immersed in contemplation. Anyway I can't just stay here walking on eggshells if I'm in the running for empress. I must have a pretty high rank that means I shouldn't have to bow to anyone besides the emperor who I've never even met. She mused her thoughts weaving through the complexities of her newfound status as her fingers subconsciously tightened into clenched fists she reminded herself okay think you've just woken up in a new world as a nobleman's daughter you should be enjoying this meanwhile. Serena's gentle voice pierced through Lucia's reverie my lady turning towards her faithful attendant Lucia discovered Serena gracefully balancing a delicate tea tray with a hint of concern Serena inquired I couldn't find you in your room where were you Lucia's realization struck her swiftly right I asked her to bring me some tea I totally forgot. Offering a polite apology Lucia began I'm sore no before swiftly correcting herself mindful of her noble station straightening her posture she turned back to Serena asserting I wish to go for a walk let's go Serena ever dutiful replied with a differential yes my lady was Serena and told Lucia made her way to the sprawling rose garden the vibrant. Blooms providing a stark contrast to her swirling thoughts delicately plucking a rose Lucia brought it to her nose inhaling deeply as she reveled in its sweet fragrance however the tranquility of the moment was shattered when an imposing figure clad in an archive outfit emerged casting a formidable shadow over the serene surroundings startled both. 
Lucia and Serena froze in apprehension their hearts pounding in unison at the unexpected intrusion in the tranquil expanse of the rose garden Serena and Lucia were startled by the sudden appearance of a figure clad in an archive outfit reacting swiftly to protect Lucia Serena cried out in alarm my lady the figure sensing their fear quickly raised his hands in a placating gesture exclaiming wait I'm not here to hurt you with an earnest tone he added it's my first day as a palace guard I'm afraid I've gotten lost could you point me in the direction of the east gate Lucia though initially taken aback composed herself with an air of aristocratic poise it's over there she replied gesturing confidently towards the indicated direction however inwardly she felt a surge of trepidation wait this is my chance to act like a real aristocrat she realized the weight of her decision evident in the beads of sweat forming on her brow summoning her courage she hesitantly continued maybe the guard intrigued by lucia's response questioned her Further don't you live here in a deft display of what Lucia countered with a question of her own who's to say emboldened by her newfound sense of agency Lucia held her ground her demeanor reflecting a newfound sense of confidence amidst the uncertainty of the moment he added oh so you've come from outside dash Lucia visibly annoyed interjected I said I haven't the foggiest and awkward silence hung between them punctuated only by the rustling of leaves in the garden sensing the need to depart from the uncomfortable exchange Lucia began to make her exit declaring let's go Serena ever obedient replied with a respectful yes my lady as they moved away from the scene Lucia couldn't shake the Lingering doubt in her mind did that make me look aristocratic she pondered her steps adorned with the grace of her beautiful blue heels with each stride forward she couldn't help but question if she had projected enough strength in her response resolute in her determination to assert her noble status she silently vowed one more word out of your mouth and I'll have you beheaded lost in her thoughts. She mumbled to herself. Would that have sounded more natural? Suddenly Serena's voice broke through her contemplation. My lady, startled from her reverie, Lucia refocused her attention, ready to continue navigating the delicate dance of nobility. With poise and precision, she responded with a dismissive wave of her hand, accompanied by a forced smile. Oh, don't mind me, I'm fine. Her attempt at reassurance was met with a polite nod from Serena, who replied, That's good to hear. Internally, however, Lucia's thoughts churned with uncertainty. This sure ain't easy. She admitted to herself, her brow furrowing in contemplation. I hope that guard found his way. She mused, a tinge of concern evident in her voice, as she scanned the surroundings for any sign of the lost century. As her gaze drifted, she noticed the guard in question approaching, his steps accompanied by an unusual creaking sound. Why is he walking like that? Does he have a limp or something? Lucia pondered aloud her curiosity piqued by the unexpected sight. Unbeknownst to her, the guard she observed was none other than Jace, whose thoughts strayed to his own assessment of Lucia's demeanor. Hmm, she appears fine, but she's actually a bit daft, isn't she? Amused, a hint of superiority creeping into his tone. Perhaps she's not right in the head. He speculated, his gaze lingering on Lucia with a mixture of skepticism and amusement. With a wry smirk, he added, Ah, uh, maybe, maybe she's just a beautiful moron. Eric sat in his office, hunched over a desk cluttered with papers, diligently scribbling away with a feather pen. His attire, a sophisticated blend of gray and blue, exuded an air of professionalism befitting his status. Across from him stood his younger brother Alvis, engaged in conversation. So, one of the ladies of the Rose Palace will become my tutor? Alvis inquired, his tone tinged with curiosity. Eric nodded solemnly in response, confirming, Yes. Alvis raised a skeptical eyebrow, his expression betraying a hint of cynicism. But those women only care about impressing you, he remarked astutely. Indeed, they all came here in the hopes of marrying me, but we shouldn't forget their background. A smirk played at the corner of Alvis's lips as he continued, Background? You mean their families who would do anything to claw their way up the ranks? That is why they sent their daughters here, after all. The implication of Alvis's words struck a nerve with Eric, his temper flaring in response. With a sudden burst of frustration, he slammed his hand down on the table, the sound reverberating through the room. Alvis! Eric snapped, his voice changed with indignation. 
Those ladies are all of good blood and have received a fine education. Each of them is qualified to become empress. His words carried a note of defiance, a staunch defense of the women whose capabilities he refused to undermine. They are more than qualified to be your tutor, Eric asserted firmly, his tone unwavering. However, Alvis, ever the provocateur, interjected with a pointed question. Even the one who drank poison and went a bit crazy? I heard her father's a greedy baron. Surprised by the revelation, Eric countered. Who told you that? Alvis shrugged nonchalantly, replying, It's common knowledge in the palace. Eric took a deep breath attempting to quell the rising frustration within him. That's enough. You may leave, he instructed, his voice clipped with irritation. Unfazed, Alvis persisted. You didn't answer my question, lingering in the room despite Eric's dismissal. With a hint of exasperation, Eric retorted. Are you really going to make me say it? Elvis recoiled slightly at the rebuke before conceding. I'll be waiting, and finally exiting the room. As he departed, Elvis couldn't help but ponder. What could I possibly have to learn from those women? Besides, he's the one who said they were all a bunch of greedy cows in the first place. His thoughts swirled with skepticism as he contemplated the true intentions behind Eric's decision. He stepped forward, his voice laced with skepticism. If they're all qualified to become empress, why does he never meet any of them? Lost in his own thoughts, he speculated. He's trying to get leverage on the nobility by holding their daughters hostage. A mischievous grin spread across his face as a plan formed in his mind. My new teacher's name is Lucia. I'm gonna get her kicked out of the palace, he declared triumphantly. And if there's another teacher after that, I'll get her kicked out too. He'll eventually learn to stop assigning me teachers. Lost in his scheming, he found himself standing in the midst of a bustling hallway his voice ringing out with determination. If someone wants to teach me, I'll just teach them a lesson instead. His outburst drew the attention of nearby servants, who cast curious glances in his direction as he continued on his way. His mind consumed by plots and schemes, he was interrupted by the voice of a palace guard. Prince Alvis! Halo called out, prompting Elvis to turn back with a disarming smile. Halo! He greeted the guard warmly. Halo, ever dutiful, reminded him, you cannot enter the Rose Palace without his majesty's permission. Elvis waved off the concern with a casual flick of his hand. Don't worry, it's not like I'm here to steal one of the ladies. I'm just going for a look. Don't follow me. He reassured, his smile masking his true intentions as he continued on his way, ignoring Halo's pleas. Prince Elvis continued on his determined path towards the Rose Palace. Inside, he found Lucia and Serena awaiting him, their presence an unexpected interruption to his plans. With a nonchalant flourish, he twisted his arms and remarked, I guess you're qualified to be here. You're as pretty as a doll. Lucia, taken aback by the sudden intrusion and the peculiar compliment, furrowed her brow in confusion, she uttered, unable to comprehend Alvis's intentions. Internally, Lucia wrestled with conflicting emotions. Am I supposed to thank him? No, he's being rude. I should lecture him. She reasoned, her thoughts racing. Undeterred by Lucia's bewilderment, Alvis pointed his finger accusingly, doubling down on his brash assertion. Still, you're not good enough to be my teacher, he declared with a hint of superiority. Lucia's astonishment was palpable as she processed Alvis's audacious statement her mind racing to formulate a response to his blatant provocation. When Elvis brazenly remarked to Luciano that she wasn't a competent teacher, her initial reaction was one of pure astonishment, caught off guard by his audacity. She found herself plunged into a whirlwind of conjecture. Judging by the way he's acting, she mused internally, he must hail from nobility. No, perhaps even higher than that. Could he be the emperor's son? But then why isn't he even married? Am I expected to impart knowledge to this young man? Midway through her mental gymnastics, Alvis's interruption shattered her reverie. Look here, doll, he declared, his tone dripping with disdain. I have nothing to learn from someone who attempted to poison herself. 
I had intended to reduce you to tears, but I deemed it fitting to offer a forewarning. You're welcome. The bombshell of his accusation left Lucia reeling in disbelief. The shock of his words reverberated through her, leaving her momentarily speechless as she struggled to process the audacity of his accusations. He added with a tone of finality, his words slicing through the tension like a knife. There's only one thing you need to do. With an accusatory finger pointed directly at her, his voice crescendoed into a deafening scream. Say you can't be my teacher. You'd better. Lucia, feeling a mixture of resignation and relief, acquiesced, her voice tinged with a hint of surrender. All right, I think that's for the best. Alvis, taken aback by her unexpected compliance, found himself momentarily speechless, his mouth agape in disbelief. W.H. what? He managed to stammer out, his confidence momentarily shaken by her unexpected concession. Undeterred, Lucia continued to unravel her thoughts, her words pouring forth in a torrent of uncertainty and confusion. I didn't even know I was supposed to teach anyone, she confessed her brow furrowed in bewilderment. Who do I need to speak with? I've never seen the emperor, and the lord chamberlain is as stealthy as a ninja. A desperate note crept into her voice as she added, Have you seen him? I heard the sound of him rushing past. Alvis couldn't help but burst into laughter at Lucia's bewildered inquiries, his amusement ringing out through the room like peals of mocking thunder. As the realization dawned upon her, Lucia's eyes sparkled with newfound clarity, her earlier confusion giving way to a steely resolve. Well, she retorted with a wry smile, her words laced with a hint of defiance. He's like the wind. Who can say where the wind is? I don't feel comfortable teaching anyone. Can you find whoever's in charge and tell them I can't? Lucia implored, her voice tinged with desperation. Elvis, taken aback by her sudden request, stammered out a hesitant response. Oh, okay. Meanwhile, in another part of the palace, Serena and Lucia found themselves engaged in a light-hearted game in one of the opulent rooms. Here I go, remember that game I taught you before? Serena prompted with a mischievous grin. I'll start, okay? Lucia agreed, her competitive spirit rising to the challenge. With playful banter they counted. Twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, got ya! Serena exclaimed triumphantly. But Lucia wasn't about to let her off easy. You lose penalty time. Will it be fruits or vegetables today? She teased, gesturing towards the array of fresh produce laid out on the table. Serena, opting for fruit, reached for a piece of apple and took a bite. However, as Lucia observed her friend's actions, a pang of concern washed over her. Serena is wasting away from looking after me all day. The same goes for all the other servants. She thought solemnly. Turning to Serena, she voiced her worries. She won't eat even if I offer her food, so I'd basically have to force her. The weight of responsibility for her friend's well-being weighed heavily on Lucia's shoulders as she grappled with the complexities of their intertwined lives within the palace walls. Alvis strode into the room with an air of authority addressing Serena with a respectful tone. Your Highness, what are you doing? Serena, caught off guard by his sudden appearance, replied with a hint of sheepishness. I was playing a game with Lady Lucia. But Lucia couldn't help but interject with. I thought more like having snack time. Undeterred by Serena's response, Elvis's eyes sparkled with enthusiasm as he proposed. Hmm, I'd like to try. Clenching his hand with determination, he declared, Whoever says 31 loses, right? Serena attempted to protest, but Alvis pressed on eagerly. What, you don't want to play with me? Seizing the opportunity to inject a bit of mischief into the game, Lucia chimed in. The loser has to take a penalty. Are you sure you can handle it? Undaunted by the challenge, Alvis nodded resolutely. So, she was eating that apple because she lost he deduced, turning to Serena for confirmation. Serena nodded in agreement, and Alvis's eyes lit up with a mischievous glint. Then if I lose, he proclaimed with gusto, I'll have the chef cook up a grand meal for every servant in the palace. Outside the Rose Palace, 
Halo and the other servants grew increasingly restless as they awaited Alvis's return. Pacing back and forth, they wondered, What is taking his highness so long? Just then, Eric arrived on the scene. His curiosity peaked as he inquired, What are you all doing here? Halo scrambled to compose himself before addressing Eric, his voice trembling with deference. Oh, you're Maj. I mean, Lord Chamberlain. You see. Before he could explain further, Alvis's commanding voice rang out, calling for Halo's attention. Halo! He bellowed. Startled, Halo responded immediately. Yes, your highness. Eric, curious about the commotion, peered into the Rose Palace, only to have the door slammed shut in his face by Halo, who exclaimed, For goodness sake! How are we to prepare so much food on such short notice? With a heavy sigh, he lamented. And for the servants, no less. Perplexed by Halo's agitation, Eric inquired, What's wrong with him? Undeterred by the chaos outside, Eric decided to enter the Rose Palace. Inside, Serena spotted him and inquired, Lord Chamberlain, are you here to see Lady Lucia? Eric shook his head, replying, No, I came for Prince Alvis. Serena, hoping to buy some time, implored him to wait for a moment, saying, One moment, please. Meanwhile, inside the palace, Elvis and Lucia were engaged in their intense game. Elvis slammed his hand on the table in frustration, questioning aloud. Why? Why do I keep losing? As Lucia chuckled at his vexation, she sipped her drink and quipped. I'm the master of drinking, Jayahem. Fed up with his losing streak, Elvis declared. Arg, I'm sick of this game. Amused by his frustration, Lucia affectionately placed her hand on his head and chuckled. Ha ha, how cute! With a mischievous glint in her eye, she offered. Want me to teach you how to win, Elvis? His eyes bright with anticipation, Elvis eagerly exclaimed. Yes, tell me! Just then, Eric arrived on the scene, his authoritative presence commanding attention. Prince Elvis! He called out, his voice resonating with authority. Alvis turned to see the Lord Chamberlain, his expression shifting to one of astonishment. Lord Chamberlain, he acknowledged with a tone of finality. Eric ordered, It's time for you to go back now. But Alvis, determined to continue the game, protested. But I still haven't won yet. She was just about to teach me how. Eric, unmoved by Alvis's plea, added firmly, The sun has already set. Elvis, feeling defeated, held his head in frustration, letting out a frustrated scream. Arg! Just let her tell me first. Sensing the tension in the air, Lucia intervened, addressing Eric respectfully. Lord Chamberlain. Eric turned his attention to Lucia, responding with a curt. Yes, my lady. Seizing the opportunity to involve Eric in the game, Lucia proposed. Would you like to try, Eric? After a moment's consideration, Eric conceded. Hmm, all right. Turning to Elvis with a playful grin, Lucia teased. Hey, all this time, you just wanted to play too. Serena, ever the mediator, interrupted with a clear explanation of the rules. The rules are simple, my lord, she began. You take turns counting, and you can say up to three numbers at a time. Thirty-one, whoever says thirty-one loses. It's called Baskin Robbins thirty-one. Alvis, eager to understand the origins of the game, interjected. Um, Baskin what? What does that mean, Lucia? Still chuckling at the absurdity of the name, Lucia replied with a shake of her head. I have no idea. Meanwhile, she began to strategize silently, pondering her next move. If I don't want to say thirty-one, all I have to do is say thirty. She thought to herself. The first time I go... I count to two, then I just have to make sure my opponent, and I count four numbers per turn. With a sly smirk, she realized. If the other person doesn't know the trick, then I can win, regardless of who starts. Eric, seeking to keep the game moving, turned to Lucia and inquired. Would you like to go first? Without hesitation, Lucia accepted the challenge. Sure, she replied confidently. One, she began and as Eric closed his eyes to count, she continued. 
2, 27, 28, 29, 30. To her shock, Eric's counting strategy had caught her off guard. Ha! Huh. I can't believe I lost! She exclaimed, her disbelief evident. Eric, ever the gracious victor, added, Come to think of it, we didn't decide on the punishment. So what will it be? Caught off guard by her defeat, Lucia hesitated before responding. Um, I think I need some time to think about it. Eric, respecting her decision, agreed. All right then. His Highness and I will take our leave. As Eric began to leave, Lucia couldn't help but voice her bewilderment. I never lose. What just happened? Is he just good at everything? She mused aloud, her competitive spirit momentarily dampened by her unexpected defeat.